I'm Will Raisin and today you join me here at Old Berry Hill Lakes where I'm going to be feeder fishing for bream and I want to give you my two biggest tips as far as baits concerned for catching these fish. For today's session I've bought some dead squats, some dead pinkies and maggots mixed together, a little bit of corn and some worms. When bloodworm and joker isn't allowed, which it isn't here and on a lot of the matches I fish it's not allowed. Worms and things like dead pinkies, dead maggots and squats obviously are my bait choices with worms and sometimes red worms when it's very hard being my number one choice. As far as ground baits concerned, the green bream. At Old Berry Hill it's like a commercial type fishery and the bream in here, they really do love fish meal, pellets and green bream. Not only do I catch a lot of fish on it, but people that I know use it catch a lot of fish. It's done me well and like I said, I don't have to worry if I'm not catching, is my ground bait right, is it wrong? I've got utmost confidence in that. So the number one tip would definitely be always pick a ground bait, whatever your favourite ground bait is and whatever you tend to catch fish on, pick one that you've got confidence in because there's nothing worse than sitting there worrying, is your ground bait right or is your ground bait wrong? The second tip I want to give you and this involves actually using the ground bait. As you can see, I've got some green bream mixed up here. And when I'm actually fishing, I'm gonna have a little bit in the bowl here. And what I'm gonna do, always mix your ground bait dry. And what this will do, this will burst out of your feeder, creating a cloud, almost like a haze on the way down to the bottom. And this can be absolutely brilliant for drawing those fish in, especially early in the session. Always pick a nice bowl because what you can do then, you can just dampen one side of it. When you get some fish in your peg, that wet ground bait, especially in a little window feeder or a small cage, can just pin those fish to the bottom and make them a lot easier to catch. And what I like to do when the fishing goes hard, I go back to the other side of the bowl where the ground bait's nice and dry, creating that cloud, that sort of vapour trail on the way down to attract some more fish. Once I get some indications, back over to the other side of the bowl where the ground bait's slightly wet. One thing I want to show you that I do to wet the ground bait, and this is a massive thing, I've caught a lot of fish like this lately. As you can see, I just pop the ground bait down. Ends on, we've bought out some stacking bait boxes and one of them has got a mesh bottom and it's absolutely perfect. As you can see, I've got some chop worm there. A few of them are just poking their heads through, but don't worry about that and it's perfect for straining the worm juice off of those worms. So that when I want to use that dry ground bait, I can just get a little dollop of chopped worm. It's not going to affect, it's not going to dampen the ground bait too much, and I get the desired effect. But one thing I've been doing a lot lately, in the bottom of the tub, if you get the, the one that fits the mesh tub underneath, you have the worm juice, and this is absolutely perfect for what I've just said. So one side of the mix, you can just pour that worm juice in, and have a real nice damp mix and when worms is the bait and the, you know, the fish are coming to it, not only on the hook but putting them in the feeder, I've got a nice damp mix here with the worm juice and then on the other side obviously I've got that dry mix and vary in your mix you know, from damp to dry and just trying to encourage fish and using line bites and other indications like there might be some bubbles if you can see you know, if you're not fishing at too, too long a distance, but line bites and bites. And don't be afraid of going back to the dry mix and just re really vary it. And it's amazing the amount of times you can sit there after a little burst of fish, go back to the dry mix, create that little vapor trail going down, a bit of cloud, and those fish come straight back. So a little bit of variation, although it's the same ground bait, it's mixed in two different ways. And you can use this, obviously, to your advantage to get fish in your peg and when they're there you can use it to your advantage to get them on the bottom and feeding. One little extra tip that definitely catches me a lot of fish in the winter and you'll hear me talk about when I talk about feeding and getting it right it's not just the fish you catch it's the indications that you get off fish in your peg. This is the, what's going to tell you whether you're feeding it correctly. Fish stay in your peg and one thing I do a lot for bream and skimmers in the winter, and roach, is feed dead red squats. Like I've already touched on, a lot of the matches I've fished, bloodworm and joker is banned. And this, what this bait does, it keeps those fish milling around in your peg. A few of these mixed in your ground bait, you don't need loads, I normally take around a quarter of a pint each match, just pop them straight in water so they stay pretty lifeless. And a few of these in your ground bait, 
when the fish come onto your bait, these really do keep milling around and the longer that they're in your peg, the more chance you've got of catching them.